Hello everyone and welcome to Star Sector with me, JD Colley. It's time to get our uh, new campaign rolling, so without further ado, let's get started. Now, as I'm going along, I'm probably going to repeat some of the things that I said in my tutorial video for the, the tutorial for the tutorial. So uh, if I do, I apologize if you've watched that. If not, then maybe you'll learn something new. So anyway, I will pick a picture. Um, I like him. He's got a haircut like I do, so we'll go with him. JD Colley, of course. Ugh, I can't type. All right, I will not be doing iron mode. Um, I'll be playing as if it's iron mode. I will not be loading any battles, no saves coming. However, iron mode does not work well with um, recording. If I ever have an issue or I forget, to, like I record something poorly, I need to be able to load in case I screw up. Usually it's my fault, but I still need that fallback space. Um, but I will be playing the game as if I were in iron, Ma iron mode, which means I will not be loading. I'll be living with the consequences of my actions. And honestly, it's a great way to play the game because it forces you to actually, you know, make your decisions count. But uh, I wouldn't recommend it for a new player. Um, sometimes you just need that learning experience and the ability to uh, load a, a, after a bad choice without having to completely have your campaign destroyed. So we'll uh, not be doing that and moving on. Uh, we will not have help pop-ups. Our sector age, I'm going to keep on mixed. Um, all this does is change the distribution of planets in each um, system outside of the core systems. So the randomly generated systems have uh, varying kinds of planets with different resources on them. Um, and you can change that distribution. I like to keep it on a mix because it means that no constellation is the same. You're not sure what you're going to encounter, which makes it fun and interesting. Uh, right here is the seed for this domain sector. I will copy that. So if you guys want to follow along, you can do so, and uh, I'll have that in the description of the video. All right, so uh, we're going to be choosing the Scavenger right here, Commanding Aware Wayfarer Class Combat Freighter, and the reason I'm doing that is because even though um, some of you may be interested in see me, seeing me start on an easier start so that you can follow along, you can adapt anything I do with a harder start easily to a more or that i do with a harder start to your easier start more easily i mean basically if i can do it with a, a little wayfarer it's probably possible with a fleet so don't worry too much um there will be some more fleet management stuff that you know you'll you'll get later in the, the series just a, a, probably a couple episodes that i can't do with a teeny tiny fleet but you really shouldn't have to wait too long we should be picking up some ships pretty quickly so I apologize if that's not what, quite what some of you wanted, but um, I really feel that this is the best way for me to really give you an idea of how to do things from like the full range of uh, options. So yeah, Scavenger. So this is not even a combat ship. And we're going to take the Shepherd because Shepherds are awesome. We're going to go on Normal. Um, I would recommend you play on easy if it's the first time. As you can see in the bottom right corner, your ships take 25% less damage, sensor range increased by 500 units, and salvage increased by 50%. The game will be easier, significantly. And uh, that's not a bad thing if you're learning this game, because this game is hard. So I'm going to be playing on normal, though, for the same reason uh, with my ship choice. I will not be doing the tutorial, because the tutorial basically hands you an entire fleet. And again, for the same reason, I will not be taking that. If you would like to see a tutorial of the tutorial, I'll have a link in my description of my videos covering that. But uh, for today and for this campaign, we are going to skip it. All right, so we have all these options here. Um, honestly, I would just recommend you go through each skill and look at them and just decide what you like. Uh, very generally, combat is to make your ship awesome and industry is to make your salvaging and colonies awesome technology just kind of improves your ship and your fleet and this improves your ability to command your fleet um, your your own carrier will be better uh, your you can have more officers in fact actually this is one of the most important skills in the game right here you should always get this skill eventually it's not a, a primary a priority skill but it is easily one of the most powerful 
like for your bang for your buck when it comes to uh, your your skill points you put into it oh best in the game um well best in slot for leadership and one of probably the top three or four uh, skills in the entire game up there with defensive systems and uh, loadout design so however i would recommend picking up one of these two before you get that one because you're going to need ships to have officers in and unless you have 10 ships to put officers in the leadership does, or the officer management really really doesn't help you out any anyway moving on i will be picking technology because i really like loadout design and i really like navigation um, navigation both makes you faster in difficult terrain and also gives you a burn speed bonus which is you know obviously fantastic and gives you transverse jump which lets you run away from people and it's just amazing um i would normally go with industry but that that's just personal preference a lot of people will, will stay away from industry but i'm going to go with technology this time full three so that i can just go in it doesn't really make much of a difference i could go with like one and then one in here and one in here or something and that would be perfectly fine but i'm just going to go all three because why not all right i'm going to start the game and uh this shouldn't take too long i probably shouldn't have started talking right when it uh began loading because i couldn't cut through it as easily oh well i am still going to cut so i'll see you in a moment all right here we are in the game it started us in looks like jangala or not, yeah corvus <laughs> i should know that corvus was i think the first system in star sector back when it was starfarer so i really should be aware of that but anyway okay we are in the corvus star system and we have a very small weak fleet if we look at our refit screen you can see we have a dual light auto cannon and a dual or light assault gun which is not actually a bad set you want one you want some kinetic damage and some high explosive damage to help you do maximum damage to enemy ships, but that's not a great amount of firepower right there. We've also got a Salamander MRM on our little Shepherd, and it has the most important thing you can stick on a Shepherd, which is reinforced bulkheads, because these blow up a lot. And uh, you can see right here why I take them. They have surveying equipment and salvage gantries, um, which improve your surveying and the improved your salvaging not by a lot but better than nothing and they're super cheap and they also can help out in combat so they're basically little micro carriers which is nice um for those who don't know uh you lose crew when your fighters are killed in combat but these are drones which take no crew which means you lose nothing when they are killed in combat oh other than maybe a little cr from your ship to replace them but that's totally fine all right, so as we are here in Corvus, and uh, we can see our fuel range here, uh, let's see. We're going to take a look at our factions first. So we are friends with pretty much everyone but the pirates and the Ludic Path right now. This is how you always start, and it's a good way to keep things uh, for a long time, preferably, if you're uh, not a really combat-focused player. Um, if you want to do a pirate start, then start smashing everyone's faces in but for most people that would be a bad plan so um let's go take a look here at jean gala and see if they have anything for us now whenever you approach a a world or dock opening the com directory is a great start you can see if they have any officers for sale which they do not or for hiring and uh, you take a shuttle down to the bar Ooh, here we go we have a concerned man who wants us to take 130 units of fuel to Kazeron of the Perse of the Persian League, which is a little ways away, and we do not have enough space. We do not, so we'll decline for now. We can still take it later. Um, let's see. No, we want to go to fleet. So to do that, you just press F. Sorry, I, I, I know the hotkeys, so I might flash around between the tabs a lot. Um, some people have complained about that in the tutorial, so I'll try and say what I'm doing. I, I'm just pressing F. But uh, we need to buy a ship, hopefully, with a bit more storage space. Since so we have 32,000 credits, which is a decent amount. Uh, Lasher would be fun. 
It is a D with degraded engines. Oh, that's the worst. Um, you'll hear veterans complain about certain D mods, and some of the worst ones are degraded engines because they reduce your top speed and your top speed on the world map, which is just terrible. So uh, I won't be taking this one probably because it, it would just be too slow. Um, I could take a hound. It's pretty cheap. Kites don't carry enough space to, or enough to be valuable. And on the black market, do we have anybody? Oh, we have a drone or a, another shepherd. Ooh, that's very tempting. Ooh, I like shepherds. I'll make the uh, hegemony a bit angry at me, but we're going to buy it anyway. So what I just did there was buy an item off the black market, and that's considered smuggling. They don't like it. Um, and because I have my transponder on, they know I did something illegal. They're not exactly sure. Like, what will happen now is it is very likely one of the patrol fleets surrounding Jongala will all of a sudden emergency burn towards me. Now, because I haven't, I'm not carrying anything illegal, what they'll do is they'll try and search my ship and nothing will happen. However, their suspicion towards me may increase a little bit. So you don't want to do that too often if you're planning on playing an upstanding playthrough of legality. All right, so you don't actually need to buy weapons from this screen if you want to equip them on your ship, so you can just go straight to refit. And uh, let's see what we got. Hmm. Not much. I'm going to buy a salamander from the black market, as you can see there. In red, if I turn it off, it'd go away. It is illegal, but I already did something illegal, so they're already mad at me. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. And we'll put a light machine gun on there for point defense. Add the ever-important reinforced bulkheads. And in case you're wondering why I say this is so important, this makes a ship almost always recoverable after it's destroyed in battle. It means that even if your ships get totally shredded, you can put them back together and bring them back. Yes, they will gain D-mods, but the thing about Shepherds is they don't really get affected much by D-mods. They're not really D-mod susceptible for the most part. Um, to add and remove capacitors and vents quickly, I just hold Shift, in case you're curious. Hmm. What's this one? He's Capacitors. Yeah, we'll go with Capacitors. Um, at, later in the game we'll talk more about refitting, but generally capacitors are more effective on small ships than vents because small ships can move away and vent, whereas larger ships um, benefit more from vents because they can just drop their shields and passively vent in the middle of combat without having to actively vent, which disables their abilities and shields. So, it's kind of a little thing, but we'll give him those. Why do you... Oh, it's the weapon. Okay. All right, don't need to do anything there. We now have enough cargo space. If we go down to the bar again and talk to this concerned man, we can accept the contract because we now have 185 units of cargo where, or additional 185 units of cargo where previously we had 85. So we're going to accept the delivery contract. Ooh. This is a quest, so I'm not going to read it. Um, I'll pause. Let's see, right there. Okay, if you want to read it, pause the video right now and you can read through this, but basically they're asking you to find an AI core, a specific one, and if you give it back to them, they'll be very happy with you. So they're going to accept because there's nothing, there's no time limit on this quest and uh, you'll just eventually encounter it and you can decide what to do then. All right, we're going to leave the bar. So we now have two quests. We're going to go to our Intel and there's several ways we can access this. We can go to important, which will show our current delivery one, delivery quest, or where's the other one? Accepted. So this is probably the better way to do it, but that shows that we've accepted a quest to find a technology cache. Uh, and do we know where it is? Oh, yes we do, it's in Lilith. That's really not very far away. Well. It is for us right now, but it's not in the grand scheme of things. We can It could have been way out here, so that's nice. Um, to go to to, to uh, go to this sector, we can right-click on it. Um, 
but I would like to know which planet it is. It's Kazeron, so we can show on map or press S. And there we go, Kazeron. All right, so let us head out. I think we have enough fuel. If we want to check, again, you can press E or let's see, actually press tab to open your map. Go to sector with Q, fuel range. So outer circle is maximum range we can make in a straight line. Inner circle is how far we can make it out and make it back to our current destination, like our current location. So we have more than enough fuel, so let's get moving. We could repair our ships here. I see no reason to do so. What it means is it will, if we go to our fleet, restore the combat readiness that we're missing right there. And I don't feel like that's important right now, so we're just going to roll on out. All right, so first thing you want to do when you're leaving a planet if you haven't already, is unlock the camera. Right now, if it's free look off, it holds centered on my ship. This is dangerous because you may not see something coming at you. So I'm gonna unlock it with right, right mouse button and we can look around a little bit. It's not a lot, but it's enough to save your life sometimes. And uh, since I already, oh, I didn't tell you how to do that. So when I was in the Intel screen here, I went to show on map, I right clicked on this. Right-clicking will lay in a course to a location on the map. So, all right, we can see our course here, the distance, the fuel required to go that distance, the days it will take, and uh, what if we go off course like that? Oh, hello, that was that uh, the Gemini Patrol I was talking about. We will allow the scan because we're carrying nothing illegal. If you refuse the get scan, they'll attack you. So. Don't refuse the scan unless you're willing to fight off the patrol. And they'll really hate you if you do that. Pretty much the only people that should ever do that are pirates. And uh, there we go. So, looks like everything's clean this time. She doesn't like me, but okay. We'll leave. And uh, I will resume course with the A key. And there we go. Now, if you want to time to pass a little faster, hold down the shift button. It'll say speeding up time. It'll move about twice as quickly. This is dangerous in some circumstances because you may get in a situation you are unprepared for. I do not have my sustained burn on yet. I should, but I want to see who these are because I'm kind of concerned. Oh, who is this? Oh, we can take these guys. Let's go. These little pirates think that they're going to take us on. We're going to move into engage and full deployment. All for 11 supplies. In case you don't know what this means, that is how many supplies it will take to recover the combat readiness that is expended by deploying our forces. Every time you send a ship into combat, that little it'll it'll spend that many supplies to restore the combat readiness. Uh, right here, CR per deployment, 10% CR. It takes however many supplies. Uh, right there, recovery cost fly five supplies to recover 10%. So. It'll take five supplies total to get this ship back up to combat readiness, assuming we don't ex or go the full deployment time. If we're in the field for longer than 240 seconds, we will begin to lose CR beyond that initial amount, and then we'll have to pay more to restore our ships. So let's deploy. Okay, this is the the tact or the strategic screen, you could say, I guess. Uh, overview. And this is the combat screen. I have my um, ship turned, or let's see, what's it called? Let's go in settings right here. I have my invert behavior of strafe and turn to cursor button. So right now my ship will face my cursor, as will my guns. Um, a lot of people like that. Some people don't and prefer to steer with their keyboard. Um, one person I know who does it is Wade Star, the uh, YouTuber. He really likes to fly with his keyboard, and he's pretty good at it. So, you know, it's completely up to you how you choose to do it. I don't like it, but it's very possible to be very effective doing it. So you, it's kind of, you know, however you want to go. It's it's not, there's not a, a right answer there. So as you can see, you can box select things just like a strategy game. You can give orders, but unlike something like StarCraft, there is a limited number of orders you can give at a time. Up here, you have command points. Each order uses a command point. They regenerate slowly, but basically this is to prevent the game from becoming an actual, like, you know, 
RTS where you're having to constantly give orders to everything to make your, your combat work. So anyway, let's get this going. So personally, I don't like to fire my guns. I like to let the ships do it. So I'm not going to have, I'm going, I pressed five, which is a weapon group here in the bottom left. You can see there's no weapon group listed as five, which means my guns are now all on auto fire. If I want to take them off auto fire, I can press control with the group. So control one, you can see the little box light up and go dark there in the bottom left, right there. That's my auto fire button. Control for that will also do it for two. Um, but like I said, I'm in I'm in group five, which has no guns in it. So right now the game is just saying we're going to have all the gr the weapon groups that the player is not directly controlling auto fire, which in this case is all of them. So this allows me to focus on steering and shield management and stuff. But all right, this guy right here is a mud skipper. He has a big mount, very large gun. He's mounting a uh, let's see a Mark Nine auto cannon which is a very powerful kinetic weapon. And uh, this dude is just a little Cerberus. He's unshielded usually. They can come with shields, but they usually don't. And they usually have a high explosive. This guy's mounting a heavy mortar, um, medium ballistic, and some point defense. So let's see if we can get rid of one of these guys. So what I did there, I told my entire fleet to attack. Now, because I box selected myself as well, it also told my ship to attack, which put on autopilot. Now, I immediately did something with my keyboard, so the autopilot was automatically disabled. But uh, that's how you can make your ship do things if you want. He's burning towards me right now. He's using his burn drive. He's about to wreck my face, actually. So I want to back up. Um, Spacebar pauses the game, in case you didn't know. And uh, the tab is how you switch between these two screens. So let's see how to handle this. If I can hit him with my ion, ion cannon, that may disable his ship pretty quickly. So let's see if we can do that. The ion cannon is on the right side of my ship, though, which means I'm going to have to kind of face off center from him to hit him. Oof, you see how much shield damage that did? No, I got to drop my shields or he's going to wreck me. So backing off, my ship is venting. Oh, you see that? If you look here, that's the armor on his ship. And as you can see, the front is now darker. It's because these little drones are tearing him apart right now. The yellow numbers is armor damage. The red is hull damage. And there's a blue, which is shield damage. He obviously doesn't have a shield, so he is getting just utterly shredded right now. And he's probably going to die before I have to deal with him again. So let's fight the Cerberus instead. There we go. As you can see, the little mud skipper did not do well. Now my flux is going up because my shields are up and I'm firing all my weapons. He's not actually hitting me right now. He's trying to deal with missiles. He's very concerned and I think his gun may currently be disabled. Yeah, see, heavy mortar disabled, Vulcan cannon disabled. Those are from ion cannon hits and probably from salamanders because salamanders uh, do EMP damage. EMP is not direct damage, it just disables systems and inflicts a little bit of damage, but it's not much. So we're just going to keep him in our weapon arcs, turn off our shields because his guns are disabled and he can't hurt us. And uh, I'm going to back off now because the drones can take care of him and I'm going to vent. I don't think he's going to survive this. Oh, here he comes. He's after me. He's angry. But we're, we're back and <laughs> he's dead. So there we go. Uh, just a little tip, it's not necessarily very important, but you can actually, once it says um, enemy fleet defeated, you can press escape at any time to exit battle, you can press escape immediately. And in some extreme circumstances, such as if there's a missile flying towards your ship, even though you just won the battle, you can press escape and it will immediately leave, preventing you from taking damage or from losing further CR. So sometimes you may want to exit battles very, very quickly. You don't have to wait for the screen to go dark by itself. Anyway, you can see here, uh, the little red explosion mark on both of them means they are both destroyed or disabled. And uh, let's pick through the wreckage. So neither of them were salvageable. Um, we got some guns off of them though. Some supplies, which is excellent. So it cost us 11 supplies to go into this fight. So we actually have its one supply deficit from that, but we got fuel, got some heavy machinery, which are quite valuable and some cheap little metals, which is good. 
So we'll keep on going. I'm going to resume course with A, and I'm going to turn on my burn drive now. Oh, and we got a level up. Excellent. So let's put that into navigation. Oops. All right. Onward. Ooh. That's not good. So what this means is there is a hostile fleet somewhere close to the exit of this jump point. Given how weak I am right now, it could be very, very dangerous to go out there right now into hyperspace. Hmm. We're going to leave for a moment. I will go visit the uh, Asharu desert world there. Ooh, oh, hold on. So even though none of the ships showed up as salvageable in the battle, occasionally they will still show up as salvageable on the world map. So let's go see. Here's that Cerberus we fought. It's a batter. It's battered, though determining whether it's recoverable or not, or not will require closer examination. Nope, it was not. Uh, but we still, we got more supplies than we spent now, so that battle was profitable. I mean, it already was, given that we got a uh, experience from it. But early in the game, you're going to end up fighting a lot of battles that may not be strictly profitable, but will give you enough experience to go up levels and stuff. That is kind of what you're looking for. As if you can break even on a battle, but come out with a huge heap of experience, you came out significantly ahead, and you should view that as a victory. All right, let's drop off these medals here. This is not the most profitable place we could sell them, most likely. In fact, if I press F1 while mousing over it, we can see the most profitable places to sell things. It looks like Nova Maxios in the Magic system would be very valuable. Um, nah, there's nowhere that's really, really valuable right now. Actually, Kazeron, where we're going, is a decent price. I might hold on to those. No reason not to, really. It's not likely that we'll get in another fight on the way check the uh, the ships to see if anyone's valuable enough to, to be worth purchasing. A Tempest would be extremely nice, but obviously I can't afford that. And on the black market, oof, I would like a Sunder. That would be great, but these are pirate Sunders. Oh wait, no they're not. <laughs> That's from Modded. Never mind. Um, that would be a great ship to have, as would an Afflictor, or an Omen, or a Lasher with an Erratic Fuel Ejector. Ew, but not terrible. It's not really bad on a small ship like that. That's worth it, actually. I'm going to buy that. The reason I did that is because the Lasher is actually a very strong combat ship. And I would really like to have one. Um, hmm. We don't have any good guns to give it right now, though, which is unfortunate. But we can slap some Annihilators on it. And uh, let's see... I'm going to give it safety overrides. This is a uh, <laughs> a really dangerous thing to do, but it can make your ship devastatingly powerful. Um, I'm also going to give it unstable injector. I'm going to auto do the weapon groups because I will not be flying the ship probably. Oh, maybe I will. Eh, maybe I will. Yeah, maybe it will. I think it will. Let's try it anyway. So this is the testing screen. We're just gonna slap a, a little simple ship on there. Let's give it something easy to kill, <laughs> a buffalo. Although actually it may have trouble with the buffalo because this is designed to kill shields, but all right. So in case you haven't seen a lasher before, lashers do not normally go 245 speed. That is really fast. We're going to go tell him to kill it himself and see what he does. He's going to fire a spread of missiles at the, the buffalo there. And now he cannot vent because he has safety overrides. That disables venting, but it means he vents much more quickly passively, and he is much, much faster. It makes him extremely dangerous uh, if he actually attacks. Hmm. All right, we're going to back off because he's just sitting there in front of an antimatter blaster, and that's a bad plan. So, come on. Shields. Hello, Salamander. Salamanders love your engines. That's what their AI is programmed to do, and they will hunt you. 
All right. Choo. Missiles. So this is what you're supposed to do with uh, safety override ships. You just basically ram into people. Oh, he got our engines. No. We're going to die. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter if we did, since this is obviously a test, but there you go. That's the other downside to uh, safety rover rides, is uh, they do that. Your combat readiness decreases dramatically. Let's see, does that also happen with Unstable Injector? Nope, it doesn't. So I'm going to leave Unstable Injector, because even though it reduces your weapon range further, which is already bad, because it's reduced by... Uh, that as well um, it adds more speed and more speed is what makes these ships awesome so okay fleet I'm going to put him at the front I'm going to give it to me and we're going to buy some crew that should be enough there we go I will repair the ship this time um, and uh, off we go. So let's see if our friend is still there. They are. I wonder who it is. Should we take a peek? So if you pause immediately upon going into hyperspace, you can take a look around. Um, a salvage fleet. That does not look like a pirate fleet to me. It's pursuing a pirate scout, which is probably over here. There are also some ships in the area who have been damaged or destroyed in combat. So we're going to try and salvage them really quick, just to see if anything's good. Press R to take all. It's a nice little shortcut. Um, also, we still have this quest, but it's got 73 days left to complete, and it will take us two days to get to Kazeron. So I'm not too worried about getting there in a hurry. I'm just mostly worried about trying to make as much money on the way as I can. So there we go. Um, we are also consuming fuel right now. You will not con it, like fuel consumption is based upon your movement. If I come to a complete stop, my fuel will decrease to zero if I'm not moving. So don't worry about hanging out in hyperspace. If you're not moving, you're fine. So let's resume our course and turn our sustained burn again. And we're going to keep a, a lookout ahead of us, because there could be some nastiness out there. We are going to go through the storm, I think, but not through the nasty bits. So I'm going to kind of angle around it. You have to give big, or you have to give space for big sweeping turns as you're moving at um, sustained burn speed. Ooh, that one. Let's see. We're not going to go around or through that one. Oh, crap. Oh, okay, phew. That is a convoy. If I was just a little bit stronger, I would attack that. But at the moment, I'm not feeling quite confident enough. I only have one true combat ship. And it's a, it, it doesn't have the staying power to uh, kill all these, I don't think. A better player than me could do this. Um, there's a few people I know who would definitely go for this fight. Um, but that mule... He concerns me. I don't have the high explosive power to kill that thing, so we're going to give that a pass. However, I am still going to try and go around this, so I'm going to turn off my sustained burn and turn it on again immediately. What that does will completely kill my forward momentum. So now, if I click over here, we just all of a sudden make a hard, hard turn. And we'll do that again. There we go. It may not be the fastest way to do things, but it's a good way to, to maneuver around uh, hyperspace storms, which can otherwise be quite a problem. I generally um, keep my transponder on in the core worlds, the core worlds being this area here, the named worlds. Uh, these ones can also have names, but their names are not shown on the map, generally, unless you turn them on. So, these are the core worlds. These are inhabited. 
And uh, I keep my transponder on unless I'm playing a pirate. Usually, you will not get pulled over by the police, so to speak, in hyperspace. Nobody cares in hyperspace if you have your transponder on or not. However, it's just a good habit because then I don't have to worry about remembering to put it back on when I go back into a system. Um, however, if you're flying around out here, turn your transponder off because that makes it harder for the things that live out here to hunt you. Anyway, onward. Let's see if there's anybody waiting for us in Thule? Thule? I don't know. All right, Persian League Patrol. They're friendly. They're probably going to go around the asteroid belt. Um, you'll suffer asteroid collisions in there. They don't do any damage to you. Uh, drive impacts on the shield or in, uh, asteroid impacts on your drive bubble do no damage to you. They just slow your momentum, which is annoying. And in, if you're being pursued by something nasty, can get you killed. I actually lost a fleet once to a drive bubble impact because something really horrible caught up with me because of it. I was not happy. Anyway, we have lots of friends here. This would be a bad place to be a pirate. Ooh, who's this, though? That looks like a smuggler. Anyway, there we go. Now, as you can see, I did not actually have to do anything. All I did was arrive at the planet, touch it, and immediately this occurs, this screen. What this means is you can deliver contracts like this to planets that hate you, as long as you're able to sneak in without somebody detecting you. So you know, don't worry about taking contracts with people that dislike you, as long as you're confident in your ability to sneak in places. Um, I'm not going to be doing a lot of sneaking this campaign. Uh, I do have a video coming out soon that will deal with trading, and I will be going over how to smuggle in that, because smuggling is fun. But uh, since this is a new player campaign, smuggling is probably not the first thing you want to do, because it's a great way to uh, infuriate a lot of of the, the factions. So I'm not going to do that right now. Anyway, I gained a little bit of rep reputation with the Persian, or no, with the Independents right there. Because that's who gave the contract. Even though Kazeron is owned by the Persian League, it depends on it, the actual reputation gain is determined by the uh, faction that gave you it. So there we go. We no longer have all that food in our inventory. And we can sell these for a good profit because they're at 23 credits per, as opposed to the like 14 they were selling for back at Asheron. Which, if you look in the bottom half of that box, is actually uh, one of the worst prices around. Wait, is that to buy? Well, that's the best places to buy. Anyway, it would be terrible to sell at 14. That'd be a very, very bad price. Good place to purchase, though. Anyway, we're going to sell those. You notice I lost 400 credits to the tariff. Um, the reason this is still profitable for me is because I didn't pay for those credits. I killed them off of somebody, so I don't really have to feel bad about it. And that's why bounty hunting is so profitable, because you make money off of the kill, and you make money off of everything you salvage from the kill. And the only thing you spend is the resources to get there and repair your ships when you're done. All right, let's go and look at the fleet screen. Is there anybody to buy? Ooh, another Lasher. I like those. Hmm, I can't see the military because the Persian League is, well, I don't have favorable with them. If I had favorable, I could look. I probably still couldn't buy anything because you probably need a commission to purchase things. A commission being a, it basically makes you a made man for the fleet in question, or the faction in question. You say, I will fight for you. Um, that's usually required to purchase ships. Oh, oh, there's my baby. I love hammerheads. Hammerheads are my favorite ships for uh, the early game. And a uh, overdriven, or a, not an overdriven, a um, safety, or what is it called? Yeah, this thing. The safety override. So yeah, overdriven um, hammerhead is a really great way to play. These things will munch people if you've got an overdriven one. But we don't have the money for that yet. One day. One day. Calm directory. Nope, nobody. Well, there's an administrator. These guys are used for administrating your... Um, oh, well, this one's not. <laughs> this is a Persian League administrator. He's administering the system. But there are administrators that you can hire. Oh, there's a Panther contact here. Oh, so this is how you can find out where Panther's cells are. Um, I, I really don't 
want to do that because that would cost me 10,000 credits. I have 18,000 credits and it wouldn't be profitable for me to get some information I couldn't use because I can't fight a panther cell right now. Not even close. The panthers are the, the terrorist boogeymen of the star sector world and uh, they will mess you up. Like their ships are terrible looking. They're all trash, but they're all safety overridden. All of them. Every single one. And their pilots are universally reckless. Not just aggressive, they're reckless. So uh, you may want to avoid them. Anyway, I'm going to go look for another contract here. See if we can find one. At Eldfell, the barren world. Oh, there we go. Freelance administrator, as opposed to just an administrator. So we could hire him if we wanted to. I don't want to, because I'd have to pay him every month a small amount, 10% of his normal income because he's not being used, but that's still 10% that I don't want to spend, so. Oh no, there's no contract here either. That's terrible. But we have enough supplies to keep going for a bit. We don't want storage. Don't know why I clicked on that. No ships that I particularly want. I mean, they have some more shepherds, but I already have two of those and I don't feel like I need more. Let's go see what the pirates are up to real quick. Hmm. Now, if you look, oh, there's a drive impact. It didn't slow me down much. The bigger you are, the more it slows you down. Oddly enough, you'd think it'd kind of be the opposite, but nope. So I'm going to hold back for a sec and uh, scan. This is way too close to be scanning, honestly. If there's someone over here, they'll come and attack me. Yeah, and I may not be able to get away if I'm too close. See, right there, that impact, you could see the impact before you could see the ship. You don't have to be able to see the fleets to see their effect on the world. If you see a drive in bubble impact right here, even though there's nothing there, that means there is a fleet there, and you should take that into consideration. Now, he's already investigating us, so let's move the other direction. Oh, he's come to see us. Who is it? Hmm. You know, I think I'd rather not. So I'm going to also use emergency burn. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. I move this button often because I often accidentally fat finger it, and that can be bad if it's done at the wrong time. So um, I usually put it right here. I just left click on this, move it, and then let's see, right click, goodbye. So we're going to emergency burn away from that fleet. Now we're moving significantly faster than they are, and we will get away. I just don't want to fight them right now. Now it's possible we can actually get back there before they do with sustained burn because they won't be able to emergency burn anymore. We're already pretty fast. Like, there you go, his emergency burn's engaged, but I am faster than him. Oh, no I'm not, I'm, oh yeah I am. His is 16, right there, maximum burn 16, mine is 18, so as long as we move away from him, we will escape. I just wanted to see who else is around. Nope. Nobody too important. I would like to take a look at what's going on at uh, the Thulean Raider base, which you can do if you're not hostile. Like, if you haven't killed any pirates in the system you are currently in within like about the past month, um, as long as you turn off your transponder before you land, you can dock with Raider bases and pirate planets and stuff, and they have no problem with it. So since I have not engaged any pirates here, only in hyperspace, I could actually dock here. But yeah, clearly I'm not going to be able to do that because here's a little watchdog. And I think that fleet there is actually larger than me. Anyway, uh, I think this is probably a good place to call this for episode one. Um, next time I'll be heading out trying to find more contracts to take. I'll be looking around for maybe some early bounties to do. If we see here. See if any of these bounties are feasible. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Next time I will have the ships named with the names people have been recommending. If you guys want to have a name in the fleet, a ship named after you or a name that you like, just put it in the comments and I'll add you to the queue. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like the video, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a question. And uh, I will see you next time.